Welcome to Luke 418 Radio. You're listening to The Dove. I am your host, Kenneth Ramsby. I would like to welcome each and every one of you. I hope your life is enhanced by the word of God we share here on The Dove. Come with me as we receive inspiration to our hearts for life. Hello, Dove Show listeners. I wanted to begin today's show by reading from the book of John, first chapter, 14th verse. And the word of God reads, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Dear Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit guides my mind, my will, my intellect, my emotions, and my bodies each day. Let me be a tool in your hand, most heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for all things, and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Yeah, we was listening to a song called New Beginnings. And you know, with this being the new beginning for a new year, coming up just shortly, uh, we're in it now, probably at the broadcast of this show, uh, we can have a new beginning by giving our life to Christ. And you know, when you give your life to Christ, there are gifts that you get back. You know, giving your life to Christ, can you can obtain some gifts and these gifts are fruit, you know, fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. God gives us fruit to use us as tools in his hand. Oh, yeah. And when you give your life to Christ, oh, you can expound on that fruit because the Holy Spirit will be in you. Who help you work that fruit that you have? Oh, yeah. And I wanted to talk about one of the fruits of the spirit today. And that fruit is peace. Peace is the third fruit that is listed in the King James Version of the Bible of the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the promised gift of God, our God, and our comforter in times of need. Oh yeah. The peace we receive from the Holy Spirit of God comes as a song into our lives, keeping us steady when we get off track. The Holy Spirit keeps us grounded in God's word and will. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is also God's seal of ownership for followers of Christ Jesus. Thank the Lord that it is also the guarantee of those who believe in Christ of their future inheritance through the promise made by God to Abraham. Those that are led by the Spirit produce the fruit of the Spirit in their lives and are destined to reap their reward that God promised in the life to come. Hallelujah. These are the fruit of the Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let us have peace in knowing that we can produce as much fruit, (laughs) as much of this fruit that we want, (laughs) because, because, you know, we can do it because there is no such thing against the law of producing as much fruit as we want. Hallelujah. As we know, most fruit grows on vines. The vine that we get peace from is a peace that never ends and comes from Christ Jesus. For Christ is the true vine that we will reap the fruit of the Holy Spirit from. The peace that God gives us is astounding. Even though we are not worthy of the peace God provides, God's mercy is so great that he still equips us with the fruit of peace for our lives. 
The fruit of peace that comes from a song from God is one that makes us do right when we would do wrong. All we have to do is listen in faith to the Holy Spirit. The peace God provides us makes us love our enemies and all our friends. Jesus told us to love everyone. We should not pick and choose, but obey. This peace of the Holy Spirit provided by God can't be held inside of us as it is a peace that shows and lets the world know that we belong to God. Oh, yeah. When others see us, they know there is something about a person that is shown by having the Holy Spirit inside of them. They can't put their finger on it exactly, but they can see that there's something different about a follower of Christ. This aura, I will call it, to give a visual of what it can be sensed is the Holy Spirit. When we feel low and heavy burdens come on us, peace makes us feel better about what it is and reminds us Jesus is there to carry our burdens and carry us through things in this life. So when we are sad, lonely, fearful, scared, or feeling rejected, we must look at God for the peace of the Holy Spirit as Jesus promised to bear all our burdens. Oh, yeah. We must remind ourselves during hard times in life that nothing in this life lasts forever. The Holy Spirit is the comforter of peace that God sent to guide us in good and bad times. A rock we can all lean on all day, noon, and night. We don't know what God is going to do, but rest assured, it's going to work out for you. We must patiently let the Holy Spirit guide us through our life, no matter how bad it may seem at some times. I, for one, know how difficult it may be to be patient and wait on God to fix things in my life, for sure. I had a period of time in my life when I prayed for God to deliver me from a continuous, out-of-control spiral of sinking deep in sin. Mm -hmm. I learned to be patient and that God delivers us in his time from our messes and life's challenges. You know, we sit up there, we want to rush it. You know, if we do something and we mess something up, we up, we pray to God and, 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 and ask him, Lord, I need that right now. I need that right now. Now, we done messed it up for years, but we want instantaneous like God <laughs> is, is, is uh, just waiting for us and uh, to attend us. You know, I know none of you have never had a period in your life like that where you had messes in your life and you had life's challenges and you had to learn to be patient and learn that God delivers you in his time and not yours. So I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about me and people like me. Those of us who had to get down on our knees and ask God to forgive us for the mess we created in our life and ask him us to carry us through. Oh, yeah. God gives us peace during trying times so that not only our lives can be enhanced, but importantly as well, we may be able to comfort our fellow man. So when we have trouble in life, no matter how big or small, rejoice in the Lord. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and tell God your needs and thank him before the blessings that he's going to give you. Oh, thank him before he even gave them to you. We have to realize that the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit is not the same peace that is of this world. It is a supernatural peace. So, Kenny, you saying that we can have something from another realm, another dimension? 
from a God who is everywhere at the same time. A God that provides peace to those who seek comfort in him, Kenny. And this peace is supernatural peace? What? What are you talking about? I want some of that peace for my life, Minister Kenny. I really need it, especially right now with all that is going on in the world. This is the same peace, Kenny, that Jesus said that he would leave here for us in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, which reads, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Those of us that are peaceful and those peacemakers like Dr. Martin Luther King are blessed by God. You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible says that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see and they shall be called sons of God. Mm-mm-mm. In giving peace, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 says, Now may the Lord of peace give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. In this passage, Paul, along with two other disciples, called the Lord the Lord of peace. Jesus has a peace that transcends time. While here on earth, he not only performed acts of peace and kindness, but he showed peace while under duress, while on the cross. Mm -hmm. He gave a man hanging right next to him the peace of knowing that he will be with him for eternity after death. Wow, what a great forgiving God he is. If he can forgive a sinner hanging on a cross next time because this sinner had faith in who Jesus was, oh, I tell you, my friends, we have hope. Oh, if he can forgive that sinner that was hanging on the cross next to him, oh, we got some hope for sure, being the sinners that we are. Yes, I am that guy that was hanging next to Christ on the cross and was told he would be in paradise this day with him. I believe, my friends, that I will be in paradise with him, as he said, to do his will, follow his word, believe in him, trust in him, give your life to him, become a soldier for him, spread the word for him, and many other things. Yes, I give, Lord, when I got down on my knees and was serious about giving my life to Christ, he changed me because that's what he does. He will change you. And then when you're going through hard things, he'll give you that peace to carry you through. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm a sinner. Just like that thief on the cross that Jesus saved. Oh, yeah. We are sinners, all of us. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. You ain't no sinner. You have always done the right thing. You've never lied, never used God's name in vain. You never committed adultery by thinking about and lusting about somebody else. You never committed murder by hating somebody. I know because you're perfect like that. You know, so I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about me and people like me. Those of us who had to get down on our knees and ask the Lord to forgive us for the sins that we committed and some of the things that I just mentioned that I did. I ain't perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. And I'm not going to act like I'm perfect either. I'm not going to try to fool myself because, you know, definitely can't fool God. God is everywhere all at the same time, knows all things before we even do them. So why would I even try to play that game. I'm an open sinner and I tell you as long as I laid my sins and gave them to Jesus Christ he covered those sins with his blood and guess what wash them clean wash them away Whoo! hallelujah what a glorious God we have oh oh my goodness you know getting peace from God comes with trusting in Jesus Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 goes on to say God would keep those in perfect peace whose mind stays on him because they trust in God. It is a perfect peace we receive from God, a peace that is perfect in every way. 
It is a peace we can use to rule our hearts towards others as we are called in one body of Christ and told to be thankful in it. Peace, we should be sought out in all aspects of our life. You know, you got to seek out peace in every inch of your life. We must pursue peace with all people and with holiness as without peace, no one will see the Lord as written in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. God gives us peace also in the times of storms. Today, we're going through a worldwide storm for sure. You see people acting a fool in all kinds of strange ways. I want to ask you, lately, you know, right after the, the pandemic and all that that's going on, I noticed a large number of people just going out and just buying any and everything. I don't know. You know, they just buying things and stacking up things like they have lost their mind during the pandemic. And then after the pandemic, they did the same thing. You know, here comes Christmas time coming around and they are spending some money on the Amazon for deliveries. I tell you, you know, I would think instead of buying a whole bunch of toilet paper and paper towels and, 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 and all kinds of things like that, you would stock up on like canned goods and batteries and candles, shelf-stable milk if you got kids, and things like that. You had, if you had to hunker down at home for some time, you know, I just don't understand it. You know what I'm talking about? Those people that likely think that they have no support and they have no trust in God. They rush out and spend money on a bunch of foolish things. I tell you, fear may be the driving force for their actions, but for us that love God and trust in God, that have the peace of the Holy Spirit, we do not fear as God is our coveter. God is our coverer. God is our trust. God is our lamplight. Oh, yeah. For be careful when you hear the world say peace. I got to say that. <laughs> They've been saying it. They've been saying it left and right. Peace this and peace that. Peace and safety. Mm -hmm. You see, each time we have a large number of concerning things happening on the earth at the same time, like war and these viruses, angry mobs riding cities at night, protesting, flash mobs robbing stores, two of most sides pitted against each other in the government, you know, here to go to the left. And they talking about the right and the Republicans talking about the Democrats and vice versa. You know, Know, then they'll say we have peace and safety. <laughs> you can only shake your head and think, what planet do they live on? <laughs> peace and safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just try to pull a wool over your face. The news media is so bad. They only say what they think people want to hear during a crisis instead of stating facts and letting people decide on things on their own merit. And they are just so one-sided, it is ridiculous. You know, it seems that they want to shove an agenda down people's throat with non-truths. You know, you sh I shake my head sometimes when I listen to the news. I'm like, what are you talking about? I tell you. Okay, I will call it like it is. The news media lies straight up in our faces more times than not lately. When in doubt, ask God to tell you what is the truth about any situation. Let him guide you in your thought process in seeking which avenue to go down when something happens. You know, something simple, just like that election we just had. Does God make us accountable for who we vote for? Think about it. I'm just asking because <laughs> it's sure something to think about. When you stand before a God, he's going to ask you some questions. And if you voted for someone that was against his word, I would hate to be you. <laughs> you know, we all make mistakes, though. You know, we all make mistakes, but we got to come to a place in our life where we look at things as a grown up and not as a child. We look at things as a follower of Christ 
and not as a follower of the world. You know, you think about abortion. Huh, you going to support this guy or this group of people that support abortion? Huh, I would I would hate to have to answer why I voted for somebody like that. Oh, no, 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 no. I tell you, it is something else. And we have to be careful about what we do and who we listen to. And, 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 and we think about God's word and all the things that we hear and see. Does God make us accountable? But can you imagine just standing there and him asking you questions like some of the things that and some of the candidates that you voted for? You know, like Black Lives Matter. You're going to vote to support someone because they support that, you know. And then you look at this organization. It could be any organization and look specifically at what they've done. And they ain't did nothing for the group. They said that they was going to do something for. They just collected money from everybody and moved on to the next one. Because when you go back to that last couple of groups that they say they were supporting and was on the TV talking about and fussing and arguing about what happened to someone they were supposed to be supporting, you go back there six months later, as I looked at, mm-hmm. They ain't did nothing. They ain't been back and they ain't going back. Ain't that something? And they got millions of dollars. It's something else. I'll tell you. And Clinton campaign does the same thing. They collected all that money, millions of dollars for Haiti, and they didn't give them a dime. And I saw the Haitian president on TV using cuss words, <laughs> talking about Clinton and his foundation and, and, and what they didn't do. <laughs> he said they didn't give them a dime and you need to get over here because you promised to give us the money that the people gave you, but we ain't seen you since. And I don't think it been back, I'll tell you. It's something else. You got to watch these people, you know, these famous people and these people that talk real good. You got to just watch them and you got to pray. You got to ask God for the gift of discernment. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just saying you could do whatever you want to do, but I'm following the word of God. And if I have a question about something, I'm going to pray and I'm going to be patient and I'm going to ask God to fill me in my mind to show me the right direction to go and the truth about what I'm looking or hearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just asking, you know, God says and told Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Yes, he knows us before we enter the womb. Not my words, but the word of God. So there is no doubt in my mind when we became us. And if you believe these pundits saying life don't begin till you come out of the womb, huh, they, they are not talking about the word of God. You got to be careful. You just got to be careful and ask God to lead you. God's word is pretty clear when it comes to everything about when we became us. So what about you? I'm just asking. Let us think through the things we do by asking the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and guide our minds, our hearts, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and our body. Thanks be to God that our help along with peace and safety is in this life is given to us by him. Because huh. I don't want none of that peace and safety they talking about at the UN and, and all of these uh, speeches they have, you know, at the, at, at, in Congress and, and at the State House. The wonderful I am who created the heavens and earth. I tell you, he is so amazing. And I'd rather trust him and I than trust anything man got to say. And I thank you, Lord, for your wisdom and knowing that we as man can't live life right without you and your word. And we need peace in our life to do it. I will add, I tell you, so be it. Hallelujah. God be praised. So as the angels say in heaven, I will say amen. Hallelujah. And they said it in the book of Revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being you and for guiding and leading us, Lord, and being there when we need you, Lord. I know, Lord, we be rushing all the time trying to get an answer for you or trying to get us to, to, to you know, trying to uh, get you to serve us whenever we get ready. But, but uh, you know, I ask that you give 
give us peace and patience. That's another gift, of course, of the Holy Spirit that we can have to wait upon your answer and upon the blessings that we ask you for in prayer. You know, God's peace and mercy knows no bounds or limits. Peace is used by Jesus when he greeted the disciples. He said, peace be with you. So let us do the same from now on when we greet others, especially those in Christ. You see, I believe there is power, as the Bible says, in the tongue. All words have power as written in Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. All words can either speak life or our words can speak death. Let me ask you a question. Which word does your tongue speak? I'm just asking. Let the words peace be with you be that power from your tongue that speaks a life of peace upon those that you greet and know. The same ones that oppose us at work or on the street, let your tongue be to them. Peace be with you when you see them. You know, we are in a spiritual battle that ends in eternal life or death. Let us, as followers of Christ, show and be the example like Christ set and told us to be because we're his followers. He said if we're going to follow him, then we need to follow him in word and truth. Yes, those words we use that are considered curse words are just that curse words. I'm going to tell you, when we use them, we are speaking curses to people. Let us speak blessings and not curses upon each other. Let us repent of those curse words we have spoken, especially the ones we have spoken towards others. I know you probably have never done that in your life. You ain't never used no cuss word or used no cuss word towards a person. So I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about me and people like me. Those of us who had to get down on our knees and ask God for forgiveness more than once, asking us to change our heart and our mind so that we don't use curse words. And I tell you, for me, (laughs) hallelujah, all that stuff is dried up and shriveled up and covered with the blood for those curses coming out of Kenneth's mouth. I'll tell you, it's some, you know, we all are sinners, you know, ain't nobody, you know, you're going to act like you ain't never cursed in your life. I ain't never used no curse word. Oh, you've used some curse words, all right. I can't find a person. If you ain't used them, oh, oh, you are truly blessed from the beginning of your life all the way to now. Because, we, because you know, you do got to count when you're little, too, to be honest and truthful if you ever used a cuss word. So don't fool yourself just because you ain't did it lately or since you've been 20 or 30 years old. You know, but I know you got it like that. You perfect. Ain't no problem. You know, when we speak to others, let the end of our conversations be have a blessed day or may God bless you and your family. You know, God has an abundance of blessing. Those who blesses others, as is stated in Proverbs 11, verse 25. If you bless others, he will bless you. We must be that set aside, narrow path traveler that God created and called us to be. Praying peace upon those who hate you because of the peace you have in Jesus Christ, because of our love for the way of Christ, because of the peace we give and display, because of the love we do not have for this world or anything in it. For we know that everyone of this world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life does not come from the Father, but from the world. Bring peace each day to work. Bring peace each day when you come home from work. Yeah, I know, after work you may be tired and have had a trying day at work, but don't bring anything other than peace home to you and your family. 
Worldly things are not good for anything, only bad for everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we do leave home and before we return back home, let us ask God to give us a new heart and renew a right spirit within us so we may bring peace to our surroundings. Let God provide for you and that fruit of peace of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. For when we experience God's peace, it will exceed all we can understand. He's good like that. He has power like that. He is a God like that, which gives his children peace. And all they have to do is ask for it. You see, God's peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. So says Paul and Timothy in the book of Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7 reads, What a wonderful peace we have from our Lord, our good shepherd, our king, our deliverer from any harm or trouble, our savior, our prince of peace. Mm. To receive this peace, we have to lose our life in this world and turn it over fully to Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit, the one who gives fruit of the Spirit and was sent by Jesus to guide you through this life. Let us listen with open hearts and minds to the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Now that The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace in Romans 8 verse 6. Remember, God gives us peace that is beyond any understanding. Again, I will leave you with this word of God on the greatest love ever shown to man, John 3, 16. For God... So love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his world. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth and being born. Thank you, God, for your plan in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice and being a faithful son to your father. Oh, Lord, we know that when you was on the cross, you could have called the angels to come down and, and, and pull you off and heal you and fix you and make you brand new. But you are a faithful son to your father and you are a faithful son to us and you are a faithful God to us and you are faithful to your word that you knew you had a plan. You knew you had a mission and you were perfect in it. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. For your blood. I have to thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. I speak blessings to each listener and pray that your home be filled with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord also quench and crush every dart the devil may send in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of the Lord bless you and your family this holiday season. Let the Lord's gift of peace, love, joy, good health, and prosperity be upon you in accordance to the riches of God's glory and will for your life. Mm -mm -mm. I want to share something with you. If you don't have a church, we invite you to join us and you can log in to the church website at Luke418church.org and click on the online membership link at the top of the page and fill out your information and you will be contacted. That's Luke418church.org. Also, you can log in and listen to wonderful, spirit-filled music and the most wonderful Christian podcast at Luke418radio.com, which is the leading Cutting edge in the Christian radio on the internet with Christian music 24 hours a day. I want to thank each and every one of you as I am so blessed that you joined to listen to the Dove Show. Join me again, my friends, next week 
as we look at how to live right according to God's word and keep Christ at the head of our lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you and your family. Until next time, this is your host, Kenneth Ramsby. May peace be with you. You've been listening to The Dove on Luke 418 Radio. Join us next week as we share God's word. Download the Luke 418 Radio app from your app store. Be sure to tune in daily to Luke418Radio.com. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channel. 